Good morning. Good morning, church, and welcome. I'd like to invite you to direct your attention forward as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this morning. Good morning. All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Beautiful day to be in the house of God, don't you agree? Beautiful, fairly cool day. Got a lot of announcements, so uh, pastor doesn't want me to talk too much out of, out of school, you know. So i um, like to welcome everyone here. Make sure you sign the red book and pass it to the center uh, aisle at collection time. Um, FUMC Quitman continued a long-standing tradition of supporting the Wood County Child Protection Board and the Rainbow Room. Pastor Thomas and Sam Scroggins represented the church as celebrity waiters at the annual Tips for Tots event last Monday. At the end of the evening, Pastor Thomas was honored for capturing third place among all waiters for the largest collection of tips. Well done. Altogether, the pastor and Sam generated more than $1,000 in tips for their efforts. And also, I'd like to thank uh, Jack Robinson for driving the church van for a number of uh, FUMC attendees. If, um, if you're at early service and before uh, Sunday school, or after early service and before Sunday school, there uh, is a continuing of the gathering in Joy Hall immediately after this, after the 8.30 service for coffee and fellowship. And so if you're, uh, if you're around and can't attend that, that might be a, a nice thing to do. Uh, Wednesday night activities this week will be the 5.15 meal for all uh, attendees, uh, 6 o'clock Bible study for adults and youth, However, there will be no choir practice this Wednesday. Uh, there is a 1.30 church council meeting in the celebration room following, followed by the endowment committee, is that right? Um, and that's, in, uh, that's immediately, well, that's at 1.30, I'm sorry. Um, there, Saturday, there's a... a September the 28th, uh, a trip's being planned to attend the East Texas State Fair in Tyler. The van will leave equipment at 11 and return around 7 o'clock. Uh, please call Joseph or Pete to make re reservations if you're interested in coming to that. Uh, all are welcome as long as there's van space available. Carpoolers are also welcome if the van is full. Um, one other announcement. Uh, 
since I have the mic and I have personal privilege here. Peyton, stand up. <laughs> I, uh, most of you probably already know this if you follow uh, any of us on Facebook, but uh, Peyton has accepted an offer, a scholarship offer, to play softball and continue her education at Central Christian College of Kansas. Pat has a little something she wants to say about Operation Christmas Child. Good morning, church family. Just, I, I'm sure you're starting to see the green and red boxes and the North X, and I, I just put some in Joy Hall. Just know that every week we encourage you to grab a shoe box, whether you just build one shoe box or several. Um, each box will uh, go to a child, at, which could be the most significant thing that happens to them in their lives. We hope to bring Christ into their lives through the gift of a shoebox. Please look at the newsletters, September through November. There's going to be plenty about it. And um, grab a shoebox, and I'll uh, be talking to you more in the future. I believe that's it, Pastor, if you're ready. I'm going to use this. Okay, friends, just wanted to uh, take a moment here. Um, I know we got a lot going on uh, in the life of the church. Tis the season. Um, but I wanted to give you a heads up is that starting tomorrow, we're going to send out our Stewardship 2025 campaign mailing. Uh, what that means is over the next five weeks, coinciding with this sermon series, Our Cup Runneth Over, uh, will be our stewardship campaign. In that mailing is going to be our 2025 commitment card. Uh, where we are asking every member of the church, if you're a visitor, this isn't necessarily for you. Um, so I want you to feel comfortable if, you're like, this is your first Sunday and they're already asking for money. Uh, <laughs> um, but, if, but if you're a member of this church, we want you to be uh, prayerfully involved in our campaign. Uh, and on October 13th, we are going to plan to all come back together. It's Commitment Sunday, and we're going to submit our prayerfully considered uh, 2025 giving so that we can get an idea of where we're going together as a church, uh, how ministries and um, uh, ideas can be formed and executed in the upcoming year. You may have noticed that I don't talk about money a lot. I don't really like to talk about money too much, just like I don't like to talk about politics too much. But just like politics in a year of a presidential election, Money is important. Money matters. I think if you talk about money too much, it becomes a stifling, unfun part of ministry. But if you ignore it completely, we're ignoring a vital part of our life and our spirituality. About 2,300 verses in the Bible talk about money. About 15% of Jesus' ministry was focused on and around money, including 16 of the 38 parables that he spoke. How we treat money matters in our life. It is a window to where our treasure is going and where our heart is. And so as a church, it is important that we at least once a year talk about the importance of what money means in our lives and in this church moving forward. And so I wanted to prepare you about that before you see it in the mail that you know that it's coming. And to that end, I want to give us a little temperature check of where we are as a church right now. To date, to the end of this last month, uh, the church is around $58,000 in the red. That means we have spent $58,000 more than we have brought in in the calendar year. And as bad as that number may sound on the onset, I was told at one point last year we were around $75,000 in the red. Here's the thing. There are seasons of ebbs and flows throughout the calendar year. A time when people give more and a time when people give less. A natural time when people give less is in the summer when we're on vacation and we're taking trips. And, and um, that is usually the case, and it has been the case for us this year as well. I want to show you just a couple of quick graphs. Give me the first one. So this is the amount of money that the church has brought in over the course of the year. 
as you can see, we, we kind of peaked at January, February, and then slid down, slid down, and now as we're coming into the fall, we're kind of going back up. Next graph. This graph represents the number of people giving, so not the amounts, but the total number of people that have given over the course of the year, going in, seeing February as the peak, and then the summer kind of rounding out. I expect that we will have an incredible fall. But it's important that we do. $58,000 in the red is not sustainable. But I want to encourage you, friends, that last year we had a nice bounce back in the fall and ended up actually raising more money last year than we did the year before. And so we have an opportunity again this year to raise more money this year than we did last year which would give us three years over years over years of increased revenue for the life of this church. I am passionate about where this church is going. I think God has great things for this church. And so I'm excited about the future. But I want to invite you to be a part of that future with us because it's important. And over the course of this next five weeks, you're not going to hear just about money because how we navigate the different seasons in our life really matters. And we are an active church. We just talked about, uh, I think Sam said we made up the overall 10% of all giving in that uh, Tips for Tots event that we just did. We're doing Operation Christmas Child. Um, so we are always going to continue to be outward focused as well as inward focused. And so I look forward to the work that God has for us to do together. And to that end, I would like to introduce another outward ministry uh, that does great work sharing the word and gospel to the world. Uh, I'm going to invite David, Dr. David Cockrum to come forward uh, and talk about his ministry, uh, as well as uh, introduce a video that he wants to play for us. So let's go ahead and cue the video up. Who are the Gideons? Gideons are businessmen, Christ followers, and evangelists. As a missionary extension of the church, Gideons meet people where they are by placing Bibles in the traffic lanes of life and by personally sharing the message of true hope with the weary traveler, the sick and discouraged. With all generations, in small towns and in major cities, across time zones and countrysides and to the ends of the earth. So men, women, boys and girls can learn who they are in Christ and experience life as children of God. Gideons have never done this work alone. It's churches just like yours who make their work powerful and effective by providing support through prayer, giving, and a growing membership. Because in the end, we're all carrying out one vision, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel to bring people to Christ. Good morning. What a privilege it is for me to be here today. I can't thank you enough because your wonderful support you've given the Gideons. But let me tell you a little bit about why, getting, why placing Bibles around the world are so important. You see, when we were in school, I can look over there and some of them are about the same age, but when we were in school, about 60% of us knew about Jesus, went to Sunday school, or had to right to left could know about God. But in the United States now, it's only 4%. So if we don't get out there and give that little testament into the schools or on the highways and byways of life, how are we going to fill our churches and how are we going to do what we need to do? So it's very, very important that we have this mission. You see, there are about, there are about uh, 12... 255 Gideons all over the world in about 12,200 uh, camps. And now we have about 199 countries, provinces that we're in. 
And to think about this 109 languages that we print this little testament in. With your help, this can continue. First of all, I want to make sure that you know that uh, we need your prayers. We need your prayers for opening doors of our hospitals, our hotels, motels, and many other different places. We're happy to tell you that in our surrounding areas, our schools are still open to give that little testament out. So pray that that can continue. Pray that we can continue working with cooperating uh, together that we can have that. The other thing I'd like you to do is actually uh, there's a Gideon card program that we have. There's a little card rack back there. You can open that up and give a Bible or dedicate a Bible to somebody as well. And that's another way. Another way is you can contribute. And 100% of what goes is to buy Bibles and to deliver them. We provide our own administrative cost. So I want to make sure you know that. But I want you to listen to your pastor today. Your tithes go to this church. We are part of your church. We can't be a member unless we get recommended by our pastor. So make sure you collect your tithes. If you're going to give an offering, make sure it's a love offering. And at the end of the, at the, end of the service, I will have an open Bible. And if you'd like to contribute to buy Bibles around the world and right here in your community, you can. But no matter what, I want you to see me. Because we have a little gift for you right now. This is called the Gideon app. 2,300 languages for your cell phone. A lot of them are verbal. All I ask you to do is once you download it, pass it on to the next person. I can't thank you enough, Pastor, for allowing us to speak today. May God bless you. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor, for the wonderful ministry that you do. Uh, and this concludes the longest announcements in the history of the world. Um, but, but a lot of really, really important things. Um, see where the Holy Spirit grips you and move towards that. And now I invite you to stand and greet one another in our passing of the peace. All right, friends, welcome back. Sorry. Uh, we're going to uh, get back into worship now. I invite you to remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought.
historic affirmation of faith, or join me in our historic affirmation of faith known as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Now, church, it is our time for community prayer. What's going on in the life of the church, what's going on in our lives that we need to pray for, celebrate, or just be aware of. Pastor? Yeah. Can we pray for our teachers and our students at school? Pray for our teachers and our students at school. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cameron Hobbs, one of your friends, got a concussion at the game. And is being... oh. Okay, we'll pray for him. And if we can't get a microphone to you, I'll just re repeat your prayer. Yeah, Joseph. Oh, just kidding. Joseph also has a microphone. Anyone else? Yeah. She recently had a miscarriage, and I want to pray for her mental health and her staying strong for her family. Okay, so we'll pray for your sister. Sophie. I would like to pray for my father, Eric Lundsted, who just recently had a procedure done and stopped breathing halfway through. He is now home and safe, but he is in a lot of pain and can barely breathe and barely talk. Okay. So we need to pray for Eric. I'll go mas. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, we do come to you now and offer up our petitions at your feet. God, we obviously carry a lot into this space. Things that are important to us, things that we are fearful of, things that we are anxious about. Help us now to trust them into your hands. For you are the Lord of this world. And you may reign in all that we lay before you. So that we may now be able to worship you freed from the burdens of distractions that we carried into this place. And maybe that our time spent with you will shape and form how we pick these things back up as we leave. Go before us this week as we do all the things that you are calling us to do. And we pray all these things in the name of your Son who taught us to pray using these words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
All right. So if we can have our kids come forward, I have a very special friend to introduce. All right. So this is the last week we have run out of toys. We're done. So anyways, <laughs> there has to be names. This little guy, you guys know who this is? Forky, right? <coughs> this is Forky, okay? And Forky's in the last movie, and do you guys remember what Forky continues to try and do? Second one. Why? Why? Because he thinks he's done. He thinks he was made out of trash. He doesn't deserve to, to, to be anything. But what does a little girl do with Forky? He makes him into something, right? He puts little hands on him and puts some funny looking eyes on him, right? And this is her friend. See, here, here's what I find very interesting about this little character is that, you know what? He keeps throwing him himself in the trash. Woody keeps taking him out and saying, you have a job to do. And, and, and I think what... Thomas is going to talk about this morning to the adults, and what we're going to touch on a little bit in children's church is the reality of this, is you're not done. You're not finished. You don't um, serve a purpose. Go, well, I did that. Oh, now I'm time to go sit down and do nothing. Right? You're never done. Right? And so as we talk about Forky this morning, and as they talk about blessings and about responding to that, what we want to talk about is the idea that you have so much to offer, even for these older people, right? You can offer something special to them, and in turn, they offer something special to you. And so we're never done loving and serving each other and loving and serving God. Never. So we're going to touch on that a little bit as we go to Children's Church. Would you guys pray with me real quick? Dear Holy Father, Dear Father. thank you so much. For giving, me a purpose. for giving me a purpose, and may that never end. May, that never end. may I love you and others, may I love you and, others. And, see that that is what you and see that that is what you desire for me. In your name, amen. amen. Thank you, Joseph. And thank you, children, as they go back to Children's Church or to their family. You know, it occurred to me the genius of Toy Story and how Disney is able to take a thing made out of trash, turn it into a toy, and sell it to us as a toy. It's incredible. Incredible. Transitioning nicely into our time of offertory. Uh, I invite uh, the, our stewards to come forward for our time of offering. Just want to remind you why we do this, and we'll talk about this more throughout this series, but it's an act of worship. It's a reorienting of our hearts back to God. And so let's continue to worship God through this time of offering. <laughs>
Our sermon hymn is, The Lord's My Shepherd, I Shall Not Want. Uh, and for uh, time's sake, well, let's just do verse 1 and 2 this time, I think. Would you sing with us? Today's scripture reading is from James chapter 1, verses 17, and it goes like this. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pete. I got it. I got it. And thank you, choir. Always nice to see new additions to the choir. And good morning, church. My name is Reverend Thomas Harper, and today we are kicking off a brand new series entitled Our Cup Runneth Over. Last week, we wrapped up our series on religion and politics. And we talked about not who you should vote for, but how Christians should vote. As Christians, we should vote. We should vote according to our values. And then we should put our hope and our trust in God, rather than any political candidate or party. This morning, we're going to move on to our new sermon series by talking about overflowing blessings. Would you pray with me? Father God, open us up. Open us up that we might receive your word today. Holy Spirit, I ask now that you would speak through me, or if need be, in spite of me, that we would know you more. And by knowing more about who you are, would that teach us more about who we really are as your people? God, we pray for this church, her future. We pray for this country and her future. And we pray for this world and the future of your kingdom to come. All these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so now is about the time of the year that we enter into a new season, the fall. It's almost at times felt almost like fall around here. Right around the horizon are all those holidays that are going to be here before you know it. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Advent, and Christmas. It is a time when Christians have traditionally reoriented their hearts back on gratitude and God's goodness. After a long, hot summer of trips and vacations and college visits and all sorts of not being in school, now, and, and ridiculously high uh, electricity bills, now in the fall, things kind of get back into the routine. They kind of hopefully settle in again. In the previous culture, this was the time when the harvesters would be tilling the soil in preparation for the coming harvest. Season changes are important. They're intentional. And while we may not feel the seasons as intentionally as we did back when agriculture was a family affair, or let's be honest, because in Texas we only really get two out of the four seasons. I would argue that God is very intentional about the seasons of life. For everything there is a season. A time to till and a time to harvest. 
a time of abundance and a time of scarcity. A time to celebrate and a time to practice temperance again. And God intentionally gives us these ebbs and flows of the seasons of the world and in our life so that we would feel the change. That we would notice that God is doing something new among us. So in times of great abundance, we would celebrate God. And in times of scarcity, we would be reminded of our need to trust in him again. Back in the agricultural society, this was the time when the tillers of the harvest would do their part and then sit back and wait for the harvest. This also can be an anxious time, a time of wondering if the harvest is going to be sufficient. Like, did the rainy season rain enough that we we'll have a harvest that will see us through the long winter and into spring again. Is there going to be enough this time? Because once the harvesters do their work, they're forced to rely on God for the harvest. And while we're not so much agriculturally minded anymore, we do have a sense of global economics, <laughs> We do know that wars on one side of the world affect how things are going on in America today. We can also feel that sense of anxiety in a time of scarcity and ask ourselves that question, is there going to be enough this time? Our credit card bills start to come in. And we're reminded about the cost of those trips that we took over the summer. Our kids go back to school and all the incidental costs that seem to add up with that. And we start to watch our bank account closer and closer and maybe start wondering again, is it going to be enough? What if it's not enough? Some of us know all too well and have gone through stages of life where you're just paycheck to paycheck. And it seems like we are always asking the question, God, is there going to be enough? You see, how we walk through the various seasons of life matter. And it affects our walk with God. Because if it was a time of prosperity all the time, you wouldn't ever change. You wouldn't ever move. And so this five-week sermon series is more than just the money series. This is the series where we talk about actively refocusing our hearts back on God. It is a series that is so needed in this time of year and what's going on in our country and this world to retrain our hearts back onto God's goodness, back onto God's provision in our life. Because how you see the world affects how you live in it. This morning we're going to talk about overflowing blessings. And we're going to spend time thinking about all the ways in which God has blessed us in our life. Because in a time of scarcity, it can be hard for us to remember all the ways in which we are truly blessed. Just like in a time of abundance, it can be hard for us to remember the need for God in the first place. And so let me ask you this morning, how has God blessed you in your life? When I think about the ways in which God has blessed me, I think about two parents who raised me well. And who loved me. I think about a random Wednesday night back in seventh grade, MYF Youth Fellowship, where a 13 year old me prayed to give his life to Christ for the first time. 
And even in that moment on that night, I remember thinking to myself, is this really a big deal? Is this going to be a big moment in my life? And I haven't forgotten that night yet. 41 years old. I think about the summer of 2002 when I had just finished my freshman year in college and I needed to figure out a way to pay off fraternity dues for the year. And so I went back to the church that I grew up in and the youth ministry that I was so active in and I got a job as a youth intern for the summer. I particularly remember that summer well because I thought two things had happened in that summer that would affect my life forever. First is I thought that I had met the woman that I was going to marry. And second, I felt God put a calling on my life into vocational ministry. It was in that summer that I knew that I would be doing some variation of this the rest of my life. Now, only two, only one out of those two things actually turned out to be true. Sometimes you can be so sure. But I found that even that, over time, was a great blessing from God. Because God had much bigger plans for my life. I also think about the harder times in my life. I think about the seasons of scarcity or the times that were difficult. I think about 2014 when I lost my childhood friend and my mother in the same calendar year. I think about 2020 and the global pandemic that we all remember not so long ago. That was the year that I had to uproot my family and go to a land that I had not known and be a solo pastor for the first time. And no, I don't count my mother's aneurysm or a global pandemic among God's blessings in my life. But there's something about the hard times that forced us to see God in the midst of it. That hard times have a way of showing us that God is present in unexpected places and through unexpected people. And it is easier for me to see God's hand in my life through those difficult times in hindsight. And so in a way, it becomes a blessing to me because I'm reminded of the times when I was the lowest that God's hand was the strongest in my life. And that's important because I'm going to have to remember that the next time I go through a difficult or scarce time. That God hasn't failed me yet. And even though I still miss my mom, God has blessed me with a daughter that looks and acts an awful lot like her. And when I see glimpses of my mother in Sophia's face, it is a reminder to me that mom is not gone. She's just somewhere else right now. Somewhere better, in fact. Friends, there are some things in this world that just are not good. Death is an example of that. Remember, death was not originally a part of God's plan for us. That came later. But God has a way of redeeming the bad and broken in this world. And reminding us that only good things are eternal. I like to imagine the day when my daughters and my mother will meet each other for the first time. They will laugh and they will play and I'm sure they will share all sorts of stories about what it was like to have me as a son or as a father. Scripture that Peyton just read a moment ago from James Reminds us that every good and perfect gift comes from above. That's really true in my life. Because when I think about my wife and my girls and my French bulldog, 
All my other wants and anxieties and fears, they, they kind of seem trivial. They just don't matter as much anymore. A while back when I was in Houston, I was going through a pretty difficult season in my life. I, I, I think, if I'm being honest with you, it's because I got passed up for a promotion. And I was playing kind of a little pity party, feeling bad for myself, asking an empty room, does anybody care about what I'm doing? I'm working so hard and nobody seems to notice or value the work that I am doing in ministry. And in that moment, I felt God ask me this question. Do you know what your girls think about you? And I said, yes. Do you know what I think about you? And I said, yes. And then I felt God say to me, then you know all that you need to know. And I said, yes. It is in the difficult seasons of life that we are reminded of what really matters. We are reminded of who the provider really is. And it is a reminder to me of my girls as God's good and perfect gifts from above. I hope that as I have been recounting my own blessings, talking about the good things in my life as well as the challenging times, that God has used that time to point out a few blessings of your own. And if not, be sure to take some time to do that today. Because it's important. What are the ways in which God has blessed me? How has God showed up and provided for me in the difficult times of life? Because how we see the world affects our hearts and how we live in it. It is in the counting of our blessings that we actually reorient our hearts towards his goodness and grace in our lives. Shaping and defining the way we see the season that we are currently A ritual that my family has when we put our girls to bed is we used to end every night by giving our most favorite part of the day and our least favorite part of the day. We call it our highs and lows. And we'd always start off with the least favorite part because we didn't want to end on a negative. But I found that there was something very therapeutic in voicing out loud to one another what the worst part of our day was. Because it almost disarmed it a little bit. It gave voice to it and kept it from festering and growing into our hearts tomorrow. And then we would finish each day by talking about our very most favorite thing. Oftentimes having something to do with what we had done together as a family. And we did this because it oriented our hearts back onto God's goodness in our life. And so over the course of this series... I hope that you will practice doing the same, of refocusing your heart on God's blessings, on God's abundance, and on God's joy in your life. Because there are bad things out there, but there are so many good things as well. And what we choose to focus on is where our heart will and thinking about the upcoming Halloween holiday, I couldn't help but be reminded of what I refer to as my children's endless bag of holiday candy. If you've ever had children, there's this like golden four to six years where after that first major Halloween, they never run out of candy throughout the year. And like candy is a big bargaining chip and, and point of sometimes contention in our family uh, in and around dinner. If you want that piece of candy, you've got to finish your dinner. But i got to be honest, after that first big Halloween haul, I was kind of looking forward to the, the bucket of candy becoming empty. 
but they do something. They, they, they spread out the holidays just perfectly enough that here comes Christmas, here comes Valentine's Day, here comes Easter, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but then it still gets candy in it when Halloween comes around again. It's where there are times when that bucket of candy is full, and there are times when that bucket of candy is almost empty. But the bucket of candy never really gets empty. I like to think about God's grace and provision in that way. But we go through ebbs and flows throughout the year and throughout the stages and seasons of our life. And sometimes that bucket seems so full. And it is in those times that we forget about God. And there are other times when it seems like that bucket is getting pretty empty almost forcing us to remember again who fills the bucket in the first place, reminding us again of our need for God. Friends, if you are in a season of scarcity or just of difficulty, remind yourself again to trust in God. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the seasons on the calendar and the seasons in our life. Help us to remember where all good gifts come from. And then, Lord, may we reorient our hearts back onto you and all the many blessings that you give to us so that we may live in abundance regardless of our bank account or our situation or anything else outside of what you are doing in our life. All these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. As we prepare for our final uh, hymn, just want to remind you that uh, if you're a visitor, I'd love to meet you in the back there. Um, I think our friend uh, from the Gideons will be back there as well. Uh, and if you are a visitor but are interested in joining this church, come talk to me. Uh, you can join uh, at the end of this service if you want to come down. Or if you want to have some conversations first, let's talk about it. If you need to pray, talk about things, what's going on in this world, I'm happy to engage in that conversation with you as well. Uh, the thing about church is we never do this alone. We're all in this together. And so whatever happens in 2025, we're going to do it together, friends. Would you stand and sing our closing hymn, I Am Thine, O Lord.
Go bear witness to the love of Christ in this world that to those who find love a stranger will find in you a generous friend. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all of God's people said it together.